Of all the sins, envy is definitely my favorite. I mean, we're all guilty of a little envy every now and then. I see my neighbor and I want his house and his life and his skin. I want to wear it like a fun suit. This is a feeling that we've all had before. And this week, we, the host of Cartridge Blowers, wear each other's skin suits because it's Envy Week where we play each other's games. I worship at the altar of the Pizza Kremlin in Yonoi. Nikki takes us deep into the mindscape of an old Japanese man in LSD Dream Simulator. And Cody betrays us to the spheres. I fed up with this world. In Cube. All this and Mario Party. Is it finally sexy? Secret. It's always been sexy. It's Cartridge Blowers, episode 139. Kimono Lady takes me away. I'm kidding. Actually, my, my favorite sin? Sloth. I think they should actually go back, name all of the sins after cute animals, and then more people would sin, and that would be good for me, the devil. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Y and Ian's Cartridge Blowers, the show where we give video games a second chance to make a first impression. I'm Cody Coleman, and with me, as always, is Nikki Wright. That's me. Hi. Hi. Welcome. We're all here, including Mr. Matt Krua. Hey. <laughs> welcome back, sir. Thanks, man. Feels good. Excellent. This is the show where in the second half we play video games based around a theme, and this week the theme is Envy Week, where we play games we saw other people play on this show in the past and always wanted to play ourselves. So, uh, really, it's just taking the worst elements of our personalities and just really harping on them. So, it'll be great. Uh, but, uh, if you would like to skip on over to that right now, and you're watching on YouTube, as you can every other week on youtube.com slash YNINpod, uh, uh, just click on the little timestamp in the description below. But if you're watching us live as you can all the other Fridays uh, on twitch.tv slash cartridge blowers, just gotta listen to us talk. I'm real sorry about that. We talk a lot. Maybe maybe some would say too much. Who would but, say that? Uh, people I'm that are not directly us. I'm gonna give them a stern talking to. Fair enough, yeah. But uh, before we get into playing those video games, why don't we talk about uh, other stuff like what we played? Anyone uh, play anything that's not related to the show you want to talk about? I, I did. You I did? Always, I always you, play things. Come you on. usually do. Yeah, what you play? I always got a little something, something. All right. Uh, so outside of this week's NES and Access offerings, which you can find, of course, right here on twitch.tv slash cartridge blowers, um, I played a little game I called a Super Mario Party. Oh, yes. yeah. Praise Congratulations. Waluigi. It's back. <laughs> <laughs> Super Mario Party is here again. Um, all your boys are there. You've got the Mario. You've got his brother, the other, the green boy. You've got Piatch. You've got Daisy. You've got um, probably Bowser. He's there. Um, Monty ah. Mole. Hell yeah, Monty Mole's there. Why wouldn't Monty Mole be there? Right. You've got a hammer bro. And they're all there to shake some dice, shake some hands, and play some miniature games. <laughs> oh. Oh, it's a good time. So, uh, compared to the more, more recent games... What, what it kicks their asses. Yeah, really? Yeah, so, like, I liked the Wii U Mario Party games. They're fine. Um, but, like, this one's, like, good. <laughs> Genuinely good? <laughs> like, Can we you elaborate? Were... Like, was the other one bad? I don't so, think it was bad. It's not bad, right? But we've, well, <clears throat> we've talked on the show in previous episodes um, that have Mario Party in the titles about uh, the fact that I, I like Mario Party quite a bit. I think we all have yeah. a fondness for Mario Party Absolutely. in some way or form. Um, 
But at the end of the day, I don't know that Mario Party games are good. They're just I fun. Probably yeah. true. Yeah, I don't know that they're good. I think Super Mario Party is kind of good. Really? Yeah. What? So what makes it good? So you've got your basic Mario Party board game stuff, right? Uh, with 100 new mini games that, for the most part, I've only played uh, two boards so far. Um, but for the most part, the mini games seem to be pretty on point. Um, they're a nice mix of uh using the face buttons and using motion controls. Um, and the motion control games don't seem too out of whack. Uh, so it's, 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 you know, it's, it's your normal Mario party experience. Plus you've got all these different characters and they've added some things like each character has a character specific die that they can use. Okay. Um, and so there's a different strategy to picking your character and then gathering other characters on the board as allies and adding their die to your own. It's a whole thing. Okay. Um, it feels like for the first time, in maybe ever in Mario Party that you can use strategy. Nice. Cool. Like I feel like Mario Party is like 20% mini games and 80% bullshit. And, <laughs> and, th and this one's like just 50% bullshit. You got like a nice, a nice 30% strategy in there. So um, cho like choosing your dice, choosing your items wisely, um, using your allies when you, when you get them um, or opting not to get them in order to get a star instead uh, are, you know, different things you have to keep in mind. So these allies, are they, mm -hmm. like, you teaming up with other players, or are they, like, AI that they you are can AI. get? They're AI. So, like, um, there are a lot of characters in the game, and so when you land on an ally space, you add one of the characters that are not currently being played to your team. Okay. And then once enough allies are unlocked, ally minigames can appear, in the rotation and those allow you to team up with your ai friends in order to win things so like there was a hot potato type of game um that i lost despite the fact that i had three allies and everybody else had one because my ai was shitty but then there was a game that i won because my ai kicked ass okay so, cool um and all just kind of depends but uh you know you can kind of just win via the numbers game essentially okay all right um other than that it's it's basic mario party but there are other modes um I am really, really partial to. I want to. I'm trying to think of what the name of it is exactly, but it is a four-player co-op mode, okay. wherein uh, you're on a riverboat rafting, and you use the Joy Cons to steer. Right? There's two on one side, two on the other, and so you've got to kind of steer your way through these courses. Um, you are timed, and the way you go through the courses can change, like, what obstacles you face. So sometimes there'll be rocks in the way. Sometimes, like, Kamek might show up and, like, teleport things at you, um, and you have to dodge them. What a jerk. Right, indeed. And then you can hit balloons on the way, and every time you hit a balloon, you play a, co a four-player co-op minigame. And if you win that minigame, depending on the rank you get, you get extra time added to your current allotted time. Um, and the four-player co-op minigames are fun. Um, it's a much different experience than trying to play against each other. Um, I don't know. I like co-op stuff, so yeah. it's, a, it's a good time. Um, and it's not easy. We lost the first time. Oh, wow. Really? Oh, yeah. wow. We, 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 we did not make it to the end of the course. And you have to make it to the end of the course, I think, like through every pathway in order to unlock a certain like thing. I don't know. There's, there's a lot of unlockables. Um, so there's that mode, and that's, I would say... Um, I would say just as good as the regular Mario Party stuff. Okay. Um, then there is a rhythm game mode that has uh, you and the other players competing in a series of rhythm games. Um, so you're doing different, like you're basically standing up, you're doing different motions in tune with the songs that are playing um, and whoever scores the most wins. Uh, it's pretty basic, but kind of fun. You know, I don't know that's that, that's one I'll come back to over and over again, but it's cool that that exists. Um and it's fun to, you know, see, you know, Wario do a twirl in the air and <laughs> pirouette. Um, there is also the addition of t a team Mario Party mode um, where it's always two players versus two players. Okay. And so that changes the way the minigames are played and they have their own special separate boards. I haven't tried that one yet, but I think that's a cool addition. Um, there is online, sort of. Um Basically, you play a series of mini games that seem to shuffle weekly. Okay. And That's uh, cool. yeah, and then you play those mini games online um, in a sort of like basic, almost like 
tournament fashion. Um, it it's all right. It was a little laggy, um, and I have a pretty decent connection, so I don't normally see a ton of lag, uh, especially in games like that. But um, it was a little laggy for my taste, so I don't know if I'll go back to it too much. But it's again cool that it exists. Um, and then lastly, there's Toad's Playroom where there are cool little uh, side games. Um, there's a neat baseball game that is in there. Um, that's a 2v2 game that uh, kind of has you playing on... Uh, I don't even know how to describe it. Like, your character's on a sort of toy okay. that... Uh, <laughs> okay. Like, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's really weird. Uh, and they have games that you can play only with two switches. Um, which I was like, that's cool. Um, we currently now have two switches in the household. Um, oh, do you? I was wondering if you had an opportunity. Uh, I mean, well, so Joe got a, a, a switch at Disney like this week. They just oh, okay. gave it, they just gave it to him. What? Um, what? Right. And <laughs> Joe's luck is incredible. <laughs> Tell me about it. Um, and so uh, I looked into it, and the bummer part is. Um, you actually have to have two copies of Mario Party as well. Really? Yeah. Uh, so there's like some cool mini games that are locked behind uh, a price wall, I would say. Uh, yeah, at least a like three hundred dollar price wall. Right. Well, two switches plus Mario Party itself is sixty bucks. Yeah. So, um. Yeah. Other than that, I think it's a good time. Um, the all new characters are fun. I mean, I've been playing as Goomba a lot. Um, and it's that, funny because that's he, right. He doesn't have hands. <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a good time. Um, <laughs> but and, he floats things in front of him. It's great. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, like, I don't know. It's it's got it's got your classic Nintendo polish, right? I mean, at times you when you win a team game, it's going to prompt you to give each other a high five with the Joy-Con motion. And if you do that, you get extra coins. Like you want me to work with that? It's a good. Cool. It's a good. I think it's a good. What a addition. weird mechanic. All right. For sure. Um, but yeah, so that's Super Mario Party. I uh, I recommend it. All right. Cool. If you, if you like Mario Party. If you don't, then don't get it. Well, yeah, that would be a bad idea, I would for think. For sure. Yeah. Uh, anything else? That's about it for me. Right on. Nikki, you play anything? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. You had to think about it. That's fine. Um, I, I mean, I right? watched a whole lot of other video games be played. Heck yeah. 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 There you go. You did right. commentary for... Oh, yeah, that's right. right. I, did, yeah. I did really poor commentary. Um, you did poor. great. <laughs> uh, Super Mario Bros. 3 speedrun race a couple... Three, almost three a week mix. Ago. Three mix race, absolutely. That is a very important distinction. Um, that game is going to be showcased at AGDQ this year, so I was really awesome. excited to be given the opportunity to sort of host that race between... Um, Two people who have held the world record and um, someone who's in the top three, I think. So awesome! Um, yeah, it was really cool. It was um, really fun to watch, and you cool, did great. Yeah, it, Mar thank you. I, I appreciate the uh, niceness. Um, <laughs> uh, three Mix is a really damn cool love. game. I know we've talked about it a little bit in the recent past, but if you haven't checked it out, I really encourage you to. It's like a love letter to the Mario games. It's just a really awesome ROM hack. It is it is really interesting to watch like all of the Mario games crammed into one. It's it's yeah. pretty neat. Yeah. Right on. Well, uh here's hoping you get to do it again. Yeah, that'd be a lot of fun and you know, it'll be better next time. But it'll be so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh I play I played something. Um so I, I beat Captain Toad and I beat Little Nightmares. So I was looking to pick up some other stuff, and I picked up uh, Doom on the Switch again because uh, okay. I I forgot I had it, honestly. Uh, and you it's... picked it up again. Does that mean you re-downloaded it? No, 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 no. I just actually started playing it again. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so uh, and it's it's fun. I, I was a little hesitant to get back into it again because I, I I thought that maybe I'd gotten bored with it, but uh, then I started playing, and you know, it's it it got fun again. Uh, it's it's really interesting, and I can't tell if it's a sequel or a reboot or what. I probably should look that up because the the story doesn't make much sense. Does anyone care about Doom? Not lore? really. No. Uh, it's, there's Hell and Mars, and that's pretty much all you need to know. <laughs> my the extent of my Doom lore is the comic where the 
Like, have you ever seen the Doom comic? I have not. I've seen the Doom movie. It's oh, bad. Oh, you have to see the Doom comic. Okay. So, like, basically, it's just, like, 24 pages of 90s narration where the guy is just, like, screaming, um, God, it's like, rip and tear, rip and tear, rip and tear this demon's guts. And, like, it's what? fucking ridiculous. It's great. Um, <laughs> okay. And he's just, like, waxing poetic about the BFG. It's a good time. All right. Well, no, I, I will probably not read that, but that, that sounds cool. <laughs> uh, and then I uh, was looking for a kind of spooky game to play with uh, Brooke that I hadn't played or really, really knew much about. Uh, and uh, I started playing a game called Gone Home. Uh, oh, okay. And uh, it is. It is good. We played it in its entirety because uh, once you realize it's not a scary game, uh, then you're kind of enthralled in the story. Um, and it's, I say it's a good game. There's not much game to it. Yeah. It's really more of just an immersive narrative. Um, and, uh, it does a really good job. There are puzzles. They're not particularly hard and there's not particular, they're, they're not plentiful. Uh, there are side stories that you start fleshing out that really don't have much to do with anything. But the main story is actually really kind of cool and slightly endearing. Um, uh, but there's all these spooky things in the background, like noises and stuff. And you go to a phone at one point uh, in the very beginning where someone is just crying and screaming on the other end of it. Uh, and who hasn't done that in their lives? I right. Feel. Absolutely. So it really leads you to believe that there is some spooky element to it. There's not. So if you want to play a horror game, not for you. If you want to play kind of a compelling game that uh, has a really interesting narrative um, and you're okay with it only kind of being a game, uh, yeah. then, you know, give it a shot. It's not very expensive. Uh, it's well done. Uh, it is fairly divisive because it's a little left-leaning and um, it also... No, fuck if it's not divisive. Fuck that if you don't like that. Right. Well, absolutely. Agreed. Cover Blowers does not, does not, is not a centrist show. <laughs> We're about video games and justice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Absolutely. Uh, and then, um, th th but, you know, there, there's not much solving, not much. Um, there's I mean, you no... say it's kind of a game. I say it's as much of a game as any Telltale game you know well that's true uh telltale does have some puzzles like putting the thing with the thing and then uh, yeah <laughs> uh, but yeah so there there are some there, there are more game elements in a telltale series than there are in in this game but it's still good so if you have just i think it's like 15 bucks i think it goes on sale all the time wait yeah. till christmas yeah just uh, pick it up on sale uh it takes about four to five hours to complete um if if you're taking it casually uh so yeah uh it's a good time pretty small um but i recommend it and that's really all i've been playing uh why don't we very quickly go through some of the stuff that's coming out in the next two weeks <laughs> Moving on to October 26, 2018, Red Dead Redemption 2 for the PS4 and Xbox One. Which why this was, why I was giving you looks. Yeah, I I had to throw that in there because I know how much you love this series. Tell us about the sequel that's coming out. Oh my god, I got a boner for this game. <laughs> oh, it looks good. Um, so Red Dead Redemption 2 is shockingly enough the sequel to Red Dead Redemption, a game what? made by yeah I know <laughs> crazy. Um, I, well, I mean, Red Dead Redemption was a sequel to Red Dead Revolver, so I don't know why they didn't just come up with a cool R name. Right. Um, instead of going with the number two, like idiots. That's made by Rockstar, uh, makers of Grand Theft Auto and nothing else that matters. And, um, <laughs> it's essentially a Western simulator. Um, you play as a guy, I'm, I'm mostly unspoiled about the story. You play as a guy who's a member of a gang. Okay. Um, it's, a, it's a prequel to the first game. A cowboy so, gang? Yes. An outlaw cowboy gang. Okay. And you're going across the sort of fictionalized old west, um, and when I say fictionalized, it's it's like there there there's realism to it, but I mean like geographically, it's very fictionalized because like in the first game, you could 
like ride your horse to Canada and to Mexico in pretty short order. Um, <laughs> I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. Most of the northern and southern U.S. is just gone. It's fine. Right. Um, but there's just uh, there's a lot to do. Uh, from what I've seen, it seems very immersive. Um, like characters will react to your actions that you take around the world. Um, like if you rob a stagecoach, people are going to be like, it will like turn their faces from you in the streets. Oh, wow. And as they're walking by you, they're like, oh, shit, that's that dude. Fuck. No. Oh, that's um, pretty cool. Or you can pull up your little mask with the touch of a button, and then people won't react to you anymore. <laughs> uh, but if you forget to do that, then yeah. Or if you are if you encounter someone who, you know, I think I, I heard a story about, like, um, so it was an, like a story, a random side quest they came upon in the world where there was a guy who was using binoculars to spy on a woman in her house, and he was being a creeper. And so um, he is like, hey, can you help me, like, meet this woman? I think I'm in love with her. And uh, her husband died recently, and I would like to kind of, you know, move in on this territory. And you've got, nice. like, you can do whatever you want, right? Um, and so the person playing the game was like, oh, yeah, no, I, I shot him and killed him immediately. <laughs> <laughs> right. I was like, yeah, for sure. Correct answer. <laughs> um, but, like, he also had the option of, you know – acting angry towards the dude and scaring him away um or of going and telling the lady um it, it seems almost like a rock star like sort of i want to say bethesda style game right okay where you've got like so many different ways to do these quests but you're still in this open like it's a much more like rockstar does open worlds better than bethesda but bethesda does storylines better than rockstar um, and it seems like they're focusing on the storyline while still keeping their backbone of a really good open world. It's I, People are saying it's going to be good, and I think it's going to be good, and it looks pretty good, so it's probably going to be good. I'll let you know. <laughs> all right. That's, that's all we need to know, really. Uh, that's also all we have to talk about for what's coming out. Cool. Um, so why don't we get into playing the games this week? Woo! Great. Woo. Let's do that. Let's I'm do excited. it. So, uh, this week, like I said at the start of the show, is Envy Week. We play games that we saw one of the others of us uh, play earlier on in the show's history. Going all the way back to episode one, which is like a million years ago. Right. So, yeah. I mean, this, we're on episode 139 now, so there's a lot to choose from. Uh, and Matt is going to be starting us off. Excellent. So, I went back and I looked through the archives of the show, trying to find a game that I wanted to play. Um, and one stuck out to me. It's a game that I've played before, but I remembered liking a lot as a kid. And uh, so I decided that I was going to go all the way back to episode 73, um, which was on October 15th, 2015, three wow. years ago, um, where Nikki played the game Yo Noid for Adver Games Week. Um, if I recall, she did not like it. Yeah, Nikki, you I don't like you. Know, it was hot garbage. Yeah, well, I don't know. Like, <laughs> listen, kid me, kid me enjoyed the pizza crumb one, the Noid, um, and, and and I was like, maybe maybe Nikki just didn't get it. Okay, like I would. So um, <laughs> I I fashioned myself, of course, as a Noid expert, not just in the video game Yo Noid. But uh, in general, I feel like I'm a Noid scholar. Sure. Um, yes. Uh, I mean, of course, we know the Noid as a creature of pure pizza desire. Uh, Absolutely. Who the Domino's Corporation so selfishly used for their own gain, when really the Noid is here. It's all of us. It's all of us. Because <laughs> we all crave I, the pizza at all times. At all times. Um, so. That's why I feel like with my noid, my noidery. Um, <laughs> sure. Yeah, I, I'm especially equipped to tackle the you annoyed. Know, so uh, I decided to go hard. Okay. Why don't we get on into watching you play the noid? Let's take a look. I, I like your, uh, your frame there. Yeah, thanks. It's I made good. it out of a pizza box. Good job. Yeah, John Mayer apparently is in this game, by the way. I don't know if you guys saw that last time. <laughs> I, I didn't. So this is you annoyed? Oh, um, yeah, it's all coming screaming back to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
there no sound? It's just very hear. soft. It's there. Oh, it's just it. quiet. Yeah. Okay. Make it louder. They got to be able to hear this really good music. I, I turned um, it up as loud as I could. So yeah, I'm trying to uh, basically <laughs> go as fast as possible, never stop running. Can we talk about this fucking water texture? What is this? Yeah. Okay, well, okay, I think it's really good. No, um, you are bad at taste. I... <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Okay, for, what, what more do you want from a water texture? I'm going to give you, here, here it is. Here's Something the that doesn't look like it's going to give me a seizure. No, for it's blue. Uh-huh. Okay, that's one. Step one. Sure. Step two, moves. Yeah. Okay. Got two. I, this has got more than two frames of animation, by the way. All right. Oh, like four whole frames. Yeah, yeah. four whole frames. You look at it. <laughs> I um, like that the background of the water goes up and down with the city and the platform you're on. Well, yeah, no. So basically, this, this takes place, of course, in uh, Detroit. Uh, sure. And... And as we all know, uh, Detroit is mostly just like a water city under it's it's mostly under yeah, it's like modern day Venice. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you, the, most things are connected by these sort of bamboo. Uh, <laughs> fuck that fish! Um, you are not having a good time, sir. What are you talking about? I'm really good at you annoyed. So I. <laughs> by the way, the uh, the chat agrees with Nikki. <laughs> this game being high garbage. I liked this game as well. I'm with you, Matt. Listen, yeah, you're both shit. kids, uh -huh. and both? as much as I love you both, Kid Cody and Kid Matt were dummies. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not going to say you're wrong. Listen, when I'm <laughs> hopped up on fucking cheese bread, and I'm out here, and I got my rabbit suit on, like, is, is he wearing a rabbit suit, or is he a rabbit? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. He's a pizza um, demon. He's a, <laughs> he's a gremlin. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so I've got my rabbit my rabbit suit on, and I've got my yo-yo, my, my straight-up fucking Duncan, ready to go around the world. Um, I mean, like, I don't know. How could you not like this game? Just just put the pizza put the tomato sauce right in my veins, is what I'm saying. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Isn't this a skin of another game? Yeah. Yes, all right, <laughs> okay. Yeah, so in Japan, this game was known as, uh, let's see, Kamen no Ninja Hanamaru, uh, Mass Ninja Hanamaru, um, which, like, I mean, you know, I, I guess, I don't know why they changed it to the Noid <laughs> <laughs> at all, um, <laughs> because, like, we definitely liked ninjas at this point. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know why you needed to replace the ninja with a pizza villain. Right. Um, you remember so, the premise of this mini game? I do. Yeah, I didn't at that first turn, but I do now. Um, so yeah, this is a dumb card game where you have to basically outbid the uh, what is, is he the dark noid? I I don't know. I don't remember a purple noid the, being the, in the anti noid. <laughs> they, they call him Dion. Strawberry noid. <laughs> Straw <laughs> Strawberry Noid. Mmm, delicious. I like how this, this game is brought to you by Domino's, but they're just in front of pizza. Perhaps <laughs> Daryl asks. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Moid. I like Moid. I like Moid. I like I like Dion, because it's Noid backwards and also a name. Um I like how the game admonishes you when you win. Yeah, right. Uh, I ate more pizzas than him. Isn't that overdoing it? No, I want to win. <laughs> you don't know how victory works, game. So he used the three pizzas, and I used Tabasco sauce. So he got all those points, but then I fucking poisoned him. And now he doesn't have any points. So that was a that. pretty good mechanic, being able to poison your uh, opponent. Yeah, I think you should be able to poison people at all times. Yeah. I think, I think, I think the next Noid should be a stealth action game. It should just be Hitman, really. <laughs> is that, is that or, a bad idea? I mean, he's not a he's not a mascot anymore, but... <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Uh, well, they made a Yonoid 2. Did you know that? They did. I never played it, though. Yeah, Yonoid 2... Uh, well, I mean, like, not a, it's not an official game. Oh, really? Yeah, it's a fan-made sequel made in 2017 called Yonoid 2 Enter the Void. Oh, really? Yeah, and... Uh, is I don't it like know a ROM hack or something? Like no, it's a 3D platformer. Really? All right. Yeah. <laughs> Keep that in mind for advert games. 
Also, this game is forever, by the way. Yeah, this is the worst part of the Noid games, is this Which is crazy. Game. It's crazy this is the worst part, because um, then there's also the rest of it. <laughs> uh, what am I talking about? This game rules. So, <laughs> look at me. Look at me chomping down on that Zah. God damn. Yes, Noid. Yes, you're all of us. The Noid is us. We are the Noid. The the cover of this game has the villain as a a green noid. Wait, what? Not a purple noid. Are you kidding yeah. me? No, I just looked it up. Oh my god, it is. Is there a name for the dark noid? I'm tr I'm, I'm trying to see if I can. I can't tell. Huh. The instruction manual included a one dollar Domino's coupon. <laughs> I'm, worth it. You know, I'm sure in the 80s, the 90s, that sure. was a good ish As, deal for sure. some bar pizza. It's probably a one tenth of a pizza. I don't know where this is. I thought I was like in a like grocery store, but I think I'm on like the top of a building. Yeah. But for some reason, like it's singles only. And it's dropping ice. Yeah. So like there's ice coming down, but like. You can't. You're here to pick up chicks, I guess. I guess so. And then there's there's a fucking doofus bear. Do the oh. scrolls do anything? Uh, yeah. I can't remember. I don't know what they do, but they do something. Um, <laughs> there's got to be a point, right? Yeah, yeah. Look at this guy. Look at that. Look at that idiot. It's the like, icy bear gone rabid. <laughs> I, I don't know what the I don't know what this level's aesthetic, aesthetic is. I don't really like it's ice, right? But also yeah. weird buildings and like, what does this have to do with pizza? Man, it's trying to keep your pizza cold. It wants you to not be able to deliver it hot and fresh. I mean, well, uh, fuck this. Oh, you fuck. died. Yeah, yeah, I fell into the Arctic hell. Um, <laughs> I as someone who appreciates cold pizza, um. I still don't like this level. I think it's very bad. <laughs> the villain's name is Mr. Green. God damn it. Don't tell me that. <laughs> he's called Mr. Green, your evil duplicate, and uh he's purple. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can we can we can we can we stop for a second? Sure. Please tell me his full name is Mr. Green, comma, your evil duplicate. <laughs> well, it is unclear. But okay. that is what the mayor the mayor calls you to stop, Mister Green. Your evil John duplicate. Mayer. Yes, John Mayer. Because they call it. It's spelled M A Y E R. Uh, sure. And the intro it was. Go back and look. It uh, was okay. The uh, localization <laughs> for this game. So... It's very bad. <laughs> so like, I'm trying to sort of you slip oh, no. on every icy surface. I'm trying to sort of stop myself, um, but it's impossible. And then everything hurts you. So. I have to wait. Um, I bet a speedrun of this game is either really cool or absolutely maddening. <laughs> yes. Probably both. Possibly both, yeah. Look at this fucking... That should have like, killed that bear. Like, what is Doofus Bear's deal? I don't understand. He has Why? the weirdest hitbox. The weirdest hitbox and, like, what's his gimmick? Why they? Why were they like, we need a really... We need an idiot bear that plays hockey. That's the enemy that, that the Noid has to fight. What does that have to do with pizza? I want more they pizza in this game. Serve pizza at hockey games? Okay. Okay. No. No. Uh, Ices are the the natural enemy of pizza. I Ices right. go well with pizza. Do they? Well, they know. do now, now that the war's <laughs> over. Motherfucker. What is so, this? Why is a curling guy throwing things at you? Yeah, this is a curling curling idiot. Do they and, like hate pizza in Canada? I, <laughs> I don't know. They put gravy on it, so yes. I <laughs> I don't really know what's up with curling, dude. He's uh, my worst enemy on this planet, and uh, like, so he throws out the curling thing, and then if you hit it, it explodes into little bits that can also kill you. But then if you touch him, he kills you. So like, cool. everything kills you. Cool. And I kind of wish. This game would be a lot better if you could take a hit. Yeah, absolutely. I think you can get invincibility with some of those scrolls. 
I don't care. I want to be able to take one hit at all times. Invincibility is like I shouldn't have to get power ups no, to absolutely. have a fun time. <laughs> well, I mean, what am I talking about? This is the best game ever made. So, uh, <laughs> you know, nobody. First of all, if we want to go deep into the Noid lore, um, I mean, if you look at him, he's he's got a cool medallion around his neck that has the first letter of his name. Look at that shit! I jumped. I jumped the fucking shot put. What? I, I what? Sorry, the, sorry, the cur what, what is the curling puck called? I don't know. Curling puck. Okay, great. Thanks. <laughs> uh, Can I, Canadian. I think it's probably just called like a curling stone, honestly. Yeah, that's probably right. The curling weapon. I like the curling weapon better. The, the curl device. And it's C.U.R.L. <laughs> <laughs> When I unleash okay. the curl device, the Noid will die. You can do it this time. I believe in yeah, you. Yeah, thanks. Well, I've got a plan. Okay. It's a pretty good one. I hope you're ready. I'm ready. I've never been more ready. Yeah. I don't know if I do it on this live successfully. Okay. But I do have a plan at this point. A curling, curling stone. stone. It is Thank a curling so stone. Wow, I know things. Good yeah, job, Mickey. Master hey. of curling. So my, my, my plan was to get on that platform and not even face him. Um, yeah, I, that's I a better, better plan. Yeah, I failed. It did not work out, though. It did not work out at all. No, it was really bad. Um, but I got a new plan. Okay. But that's okay. Do you want to... Yeah, what's wanna... the new plan? Okay, well, you'll see. Okay. It's a pretty good ah, one. Ah, but the suspense. Uh, uh, don't be... Don't, don't, don't... No. Fine. <laughs> okay, cool. You may have seen a preview of my new plan right there. It was pretty cool. So yeah, there's this whole scroll system. I don't, I don't get it. Uh, it seems like to work when you do like down an attack, but also sometimes it doesn't seem to work when you do that. <laughs> so, um, like momentum in Castlevania, it kind of seems optional. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I'm just All in right, his ice let's level. Watch. Let's let's watch. Here we go. You ready? Now. Are you ready? Yep. All right. Nope. Trying to make it happen. There he goes. Boom. What? Fuck you. What? Are you kidding me? What happened? I still got hit by the debris. That is bullshit. So, right. Matt, did you love this game? <laughs> that look says it all. Annoyed is the best game ever made. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Yeah, I, I very much believe you. It's really good. Yeah. So um, you would play this again in a heartbeat. Whose heartbeat? <laughs> the, the precious Noid. <laughs> it's been stopped for a very long time. <laughs> okay, fair enough. All right, cool. Uh, well, I'm sorry. Uh, it did not live up to your nostalgic Yeah, man, uh, memories. I really, I, honestly, like, I, I did have good memories of it from childhood, and I think... I don't have any idea why. I don't. Maybe I'm. Maybe I just conflated it with other good Capcom games. Maybe, but it's not. It's not good. It's a very bad game. So I, 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 uh, I fucked up Envy Week, guys. <laughs> good job. Good job, really, you dick. Really bummed that one, huh? <laughs> it's all right, Nikki. What do you play? Well, I played a game. It was one of the first games we ever played on this show, actually. Whoa. We're going all the way back to episode four. Holy crap. Holy shit. Right? Um, that episode was called Sumo Baby Takes You Away. That it did. And it that episode featured a game that Matt played for the PlayStation, first PlayStation, called LSD. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I remember thinking that that game, and I think we all did, we thought that that game was um, batshit fucking insane. Absolutely. Um, and I've wanted to play it ever since. So here we go. This is our time. All this right. is our time. Wow. There's not really much to say about it, I don't there think. There really isn't. I think, but also there's everything to say oh, about it. Oh, I've got <laughs> stuff to talk about. Okay, cool. Okay. Let's get into it. Oh my god. Like already. So... <laughs> Yeah, this, this, uh, so this was created by uh, an artist named Osamu Sato, 
Um, he like hated the idea of video games, to be honest. Um, but like he thought that the PlayStation in particular would be really great for making experimental music. So there's something like 500 audio tracks in this game. Sure, yeah. With all the slight variations. Um, he was sort of inspired by racing games and uh, by his own admission, um, he was really bad at them. So he had always envisioned, you know, if you run into a wall, you're transported to some place else. So, which is um, fish hell. Right now, I'm in fish hell. It's really fucking weird. Um, a fish was much bigger than it appeared. Right. Oh my god. Now, now you're in a village. Now really? I'm in a village. And uh -huh. the music sounds like I'm in a weird sort of action anime. Yeah. Um. <gasps> oh shit, a person. Yeah, there's a person. I want to go meet them. Um, I, I don't remember people. I just remember Sumo Baby. Oh my god. This is kind of terrifying. They're right? faceless. Faceless lady in a kimono? Like, what do you want with me? And she touched you, you and you were teleported. Away. Kimono lady takes you away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, sure. So now I'm in like a weird sort of carnival of horrors. Are you on a map of Japan? Or like a geographical like shape of Japan? You know, that's a great question. I don't know. Um, but my what? goodness. Why? That's no. A, another great question. Dogs are dying just Dogs listening to this. Dogs everywhere. Um... <laughs> So um, he thought it would be more enjoyable to for people who were kind of like him, who were bad at games, to have a more immersive sort of um, pointless game. Quote, <laughs> pointless game is a great way of putting it. Here's the first cutscene. Whoa! What? Do you I not? Rem did I don't we not remember this? It? Did we see cutscenes? Oh. I don't. I don't remember them. Ah, you get to ride a Ferris wheel. You get to ride a Ferris wheel into space. Th this Ferris wheel broke <laughs> very badly. Wait for it, though. Oh, oh cool. Yeah, cool! Yeah. Awesome! Cool! Look at yeah, that, son. Well, I give it a that. minute. <laughs> now it's Picross. So this just tells you how close to finished you are. What? Which is not very. Not very. Day two. I'm on. I'm on day two. Um, but we're we are introduced to another cutscene. <laughs> Good lord! Um, I don't know if we saw this shit the first time or not. I guess we yeah, probably had to. I know. I don't remember any of this. Did he work on this game by himself, or did he have to show this to other people? <laughs> um, so he did. He did um, collaborate with someone to come up with some of like the weird dream, dream sequences. Um, they had pulled from like various dream diaries that they had uh, put together. Um, but it was mostly it was mostly him, and I guess he had some help uh, with Thanks. like two other people to design the game, mostly for the weird, um, you know. Cut scenes, I guess. Sure. Them. You're already on day three. Right? Speedrun. Yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I guess. Oh, terror my God. Time. Okay. I, I vaguely <laughs> remember the gargoyle. You know, yeah, the, the terror dash kill. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah, sure. God, you know what? Oh, no. Why are you a machine gun? That's my footfalls. Okay. Um, I, I think. And, I, oh, hey, hey, sumo baby. Yeah, in, you know, I, I watched the weird sumo match for a minute. Um. And then I decided to go into Jabu Jabu's belly instead. <laughs> I know they never would do this. Oh, God. That's disgusting. I know they would never do this, but uh, this game needs a remake. So it's interesting you say that. Oh, my God. 
Um, there is someone who is just like a ridiculous fan of this game who, I guess since 2014, has been working on an LSD revamped project. Oh um, it, there's already a little bit of it that's playable. Um, when I was doing some research for this, I found a video on YouTube of somebody playing the reimagined version. Um, so it's like it, the HD remake. It kind of, I mean, like it doesn't make the graphics like, you know, stellar, but like it makes them cleaner looking than this. And the, the movements are probably a little bit more smooth. I think that lady just found out the, the only way what for lady? things to- Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> they must actually have been on LSD when they played this if they want to remake it. I mean, yeah, probably. possibly. Yeah. Oh no. Hey, Sumo Baby again. But one died. Aww. One did die. What I think that? I'm supposed to challenge the Sumo Baby, but it took me away. <laughs> again. <laughs> again. Oh yeah, uh, cool. Easter Island, okay. Well, oh, it's nope. like all, right. all the world's landmarks. It's yeah, so was it the Chrysler Building? Day Throne or Night Throne? Choose one. Uh, day Man. Fighter of the Night Man. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> like nothing happened when I, you know, rammed into the Night or the Star Throne. Did you just beat the day? No. Wait, did you get back home somehow? Yes. Uh, uh, is that good or bad? I have no idea. Okay. Day one. <laughs> You're back on day one. I kind of wish the movement animation wasn't so like, oh yeah, it just ended the day for me. Yeah, sure. Totally. So I wish it weren't so like jagged. So we were talking earlier about how Gone Home could be is it quote unquote a game? Sure. Isn't this quote unquote a game? Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, the, the person who sort of came up with the idea for it, he hated video games. He thought that the PlayStation was the perfect sort of console for this because he felt that like Nintendo and some of the other brands um, in existence at the time were mostly toys, whereas the PlayStation was sort of like an artistic machine that could be used to produce amazing, you know, experiences um, in terms of like music and visual experiences. So um, that's what he had attempted to make with this. Um, he just but, equated it to music because they're on CDs and everything else is cartridges. <laughs> right, right. Oh, I, so apparently I, that ended my day. You're winning. Right? I'm doing pretty well, I think. I honestly have no idea. Inadvertently speedrunning. The very first walking simulator? No, that's, that's Metroid. <laughs> like, okay, so he... The guy who made this was like, um, you know, I really want to use this for sound. And right. Like, these are the sounds he's doing? Yes. Like, this is, I don't know, if I found a CD with the LSD soundtrack on it, I think I'd have to, like, take it to a church. <laughs> yeah. At least assume it's broken. Sure. So, Sato called this, um... LSD because he felt that the psychedelic movement was intertwined with personal computer culture in the West Coast of the United States. Uh, he created he created this with uh, people like me in mind, so like Californians and stuff. And uh, <laughs> target demographic, I gotta say, <laughs> what? I mean, this is what it's like to live in California, I think. <laughs> Every day. Yeah, man. I've been there. All the floors are covered in floppy disks with devil hippos hanging in the sky. It's it's a very weird experience. That... <sighs> Nothing makes any sense. 
Apparently this was released as, um, you know, standalone game, obviously, but it came with a bonus CD called Lucy in the Sky with Dynamites. Uh huh. Uh. The CD contained about an hour of acid techno music. Oh my God. <laughs> so how much did this game cost? Um, oh, I'm sure. I don't know, probably the price that you would expect games in the, you know, early... I would be mad. <gasps> hey, oh, sheep! Yeah, here's the, our next cutscene. Wait. There's a timer? Yeah, I, I don't know why. Is this some kind of weird quick time event? Are you supposed to kill the sheep? Uh, I didn't press any buttons, so I don't know. <laughs> That's why you're dead and the sheep are alive. It's, it's true. I'm not speeding that up. That's the game. Yeah, no, cool, yeah. <laughs> yes, please open the house again. That's all I want. Oh, no. Oh, you gotta leave the good place. You're right. right. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to visit Magneto in his plastic jail. <laughs> Oh, no, it's worse. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of like Ian McKellen, though, huh? Just a bit. Yeah. Shit, I got funky, though. Right? The music here is kind of decent. Uh-uh. Now you're playing Quest 64. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm my God. I'm on my way to visit the CRT that I found. Sure, yeah, of course. Which is a map, and like, I don't really know what it's a map of. Okay. Like, is it a map of this area? Maybe it's how you get around. What area? You're gone. Around. Yeah, no, I wanted to leave. This sounds like a club scene from Rugrats. Oh my <laughs> like, god. <laughs> Ah, oh, you're at the end of time from Chrono Trigger. Oh, no, never mind. But when you walk there, it's a tape dispenser? I was thinking it sounded like a reel on a fishing rod. I can hear that, yeah. Oh, this sucks, though. This is bad. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy and Chucky get turned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Classic Supo, they were uh, taken aback by the negative backlash to the uh, Chucky twerk scene, but uh, <laughs> uh, I thought it was artsy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what? What so, is happening? I wish I fucking knew! <laughs> so I just uh, myself. But there was like a pig. There was a pig. It, what happened to it? I don't know. <laughs> Bet you gotta touch that pig. <laughs> oh yeah, sure. No, this is great. Now this this looks like art. No, wait, this is threatening art. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, yes. <laughs> I mean, I kept waiting, yes, but then I decided <laughs> I'm not gonna to me, wait sweet for opportunity death. to knock. I'm gonna go find opportunity. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Devil Diamond. <laughs> Thomas the Trank Engine. Because I feel like I'm on tranquilizers. Like, what was any of that? Now you're in Ice Japan. Yeah. With, like, the Aurora Borealis or something in the sky. Uh, that noise. I am sorry if you are listening with headphones. Oh, boy. And now we're in heaven. I decided that was a great stop. Yeah. For sure. Good good choice. So, uh, what the hell? You said you had to cut that down from... Yeah, I played about 35 minutes. How of... are you here? <laughs> and not like in an asylum. Well, it took it took a lot of um, soothe, soothing voices. Sure. <laughs> you know. 
Well, welcome back to us, Nikki. Thank We're, you. Yeah. I'm glad you yeah. survived your experience. I, you know, I found that I had, after I stopped playing, I was just sitting here and Dylan was like, did you work? And I was like, well, I just stopped playing. He's like, no, man, it's been, you haven't moved in 24 hours. <laughs> 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 Nikki has minute. lost days. Episode four was how many years ago? A long time ago. This was ago, 2012. A much so, simpler time. We were preparing for the 2012 elections. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> so we first looked at that game on the show in 2012. Yes. And I would say my reaction to it in 2018 is no different. <laughs> no, not at all. I am no. so absolutely flabbergasted by what I'm looking at. Uh, okay. Well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was reading a lot of people who were saying, like, there were moments where, like, I nearly, you know, had a heart attack because things, elements in the game would scare them. Um, and I imagine that has a lot to do with the music. And I suppose if you're playing this late at night and all of a sudden that, like, shadowy figure starts approaching you. Sure. Just probably. walk a couple of inches in the game and then you'll be taken somewhere else. It's fine. Yeah. Right. Nothing has to be scary for very long. Right, exactly. All right. Well, anything else you'd like to say? Just glad I finally got to play it. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so I played a game uh, that we also did a long time ago, um, but not quite that long ago. This is episode uh, 32, uh, and I play a game that Nikki played called Cube, which is a kind of portal-esque uh, puzzler. So um, there's not a whole lot to say about it, except in, in Portal, you shoot portals to solve puzzles. In this one, you pull or push uh, different colored blocks that do different things depending on their color to solve all the puzzles. There aren't really any villains, so to speak. There's just, uh, just puzzles. So, uh, you know, I, I always thought it looked kind of cool, so I thought I'd give it another shot. Um, in the game, uh, we're going to see the very first level that Nikki played, the very last level that Nikki played, and then the rest is new. So, uh, let's, let's get right on into it. Okay. Cube for the PC. Now, cube with a Q. Cube with a Q. Q-U-B-E. Okay. Yeah. I remember this, though. I remember yeah. seeing this thing. And uh, the, the levels that Nikki played, this is sped up. So it didn't eat up too much time. So the red ones, uh, you push and pull. Uh, just pretty basic. Blue, um, if it has been pushed down, if you walk over it, it will catapult you up. And yellow will stretch all the yellows out at once, with the longest one being whichever one you clicked on. And here we go. All right. And that's everything that Nikki played. So <laughs> we're already into the new shit. I definitely feel like I remember playing, maybe I cut it up because like, I remember I had to buy this game at the time. Uh, maybe. I I also have bought this game. I bought it in a humble bundle a long time ago and just mm. never got around to playing it. Is there a story here? Uh, I, if there is, they do not tell it to you at all. It's probably in the manual somewhere. It's okay. Mostly, you walk around with these gloves and you solve things. I mean, the design of the gloves made me think like, uh, like I don't know. That's a, that's a weird, very specific design. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so in here we, we have the new mechanic of the green cubes. You can't interact with them personally. You have to push them around with other blocks. And then if you fuck up, you press the little orange thing and everything resets. Okay. You're a block bender. <laughs> I, I mean, obviously, and may have said this last time, this game is very evocative of Portal. Yeah. In a lot of ways, like aesthetic wise, for sure. Yeah. Um... But, I mean, that's not a bad game to be back above. Oh, absolutely not. Yeah. I mean, I think that's really what made me interested to begin with. Sure. The player finds themselves wearing a special suit with unique gloves and is contacted over radio by a woman named Commander Nowak. Uh, she insists that she's an astronaut aboard the ISS and warns that the protagonist may have amnesia as a side effect of the space travel that they've underwent. Uh, they're currently aboard a cube-shaped alien vessel on a collision course with Earth. Yeah, there's no, none of that in this, in this game. <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't mention that shit at all. 
That was cool though. What you just did, make the, the block yeah. jump. Yeah, yeah. It's they, they've got some really interesting uh, and clever mechanics. So I thought maybe I'm supposed to just catapult myself up, and then I realized there's a there's stairs. So obviously this is what I'm supposed to do. And okay. solved. All this right. This is where Gladys would talk to you. Absolutely. Say something rude. Yep. So yeah, um, I, I wish there was some kind of character in the game that said something or did something uh, to, to make it a little bit less just puzzles. But That was um, cool though. You just caught, yeah, the, caught the cube. Cool. Yeah, man. This game does uh, has a decent amount of you having to be quick on your feet with stuff like that. It, I mean, I guess kind of like you've got portal, maybe a little magnesis rune in this. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's it's a neat idea. Why was this not bigger? I don't know. And like, there's a new mechanic pretty much every level. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, we're gonna see a new one right here. Um, we are introducing balls. What? Yeah. I was no, 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 no. I'm, I'm a cube boy. I can't do this. <laughs> Cubes uh, only. Thanks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's there are at least some spherical objects. Ugh, I hate this game now. This game is called Cube. <laughs> it's a liar. Fucking trash lion, piece of garbage. Agreed. Well, hate a hate a trash lion. So I mean, this is a bad idea. I was hoping I could push it, but I can't. So. Yeah, you hit the play button. Yeah, so now obviously I, I need to make a, a flat surface for the ball to roll on with these things. Huh, there's a sequel. Is really? there? Yeah, uh, released this year? Really? Well, gotta play that. <laughs> this game looks like it may actually be a little short. Um, Is it called Hypercube? No, it's called Cube 2, unfortunately. Cube, cube 2, Hypercube. A great Who film. Think? And nothing but net. So here Dude, we go. Dude, Kobe! I did it. Alright, time time for a new gimmick pretty soon. Boss fight. Yeah, that'd be nice. But no, none of that. The Whatever transitions. Was really weird. That was really strange. The transitions between levels are all like that, and it, it is a little weird. I mean, just have a loading screen. Yeah, I know. I, uh, I don't get it. But all right, so now we're in the uh, the Rubik's cube portion. Okay. Can you jump? You can. Yes. Okay. I was gonna say, couldn't you just like, yeah, do this and then jump up? Yep. Yeah. That's the way you do it. That's the idea. <laughs> we got it. I do actually, uh, I cut some of it out, but I, I do have a hard time for some reason always or, or routinely clicking on the wrong arrow. Okay. In these puzzles. Uh, and it goes the way I did not intend for it to go. Because so I'm, you're bad. I'm saying I'm an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's because there's no reason for that. You're bad at game. And we're off. Oh God. Yeah, multiple rotaties. Okay. So this is just me kind of fiddling around, hoping I can just see what the hell's, what I want to do. Like, whoa. Oh, welcome back. Huh? Let's see. We can okay. do it. I can do this. So you move this over there and you, you launch yourself, right? Yep, that's what we got to do. Nailed it. <laughs> That's yeah. how it's done. I'm trying to jump from there when I realize uh, in this next time that I can just do that. 
That was cool, though. Yeah, man. So now I'm a little confused as to how the fuck, because I can't jump that high. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now, now I don't really know what I did wrong. Uh. But I'm I'm slowly kind of getting an idea. This is definitely the the one I'm doing the worst on so far. So you need to. So does launching take your momentum into account? Not really. Okay. But uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of getting the idea what I'm supposed to do. Nice. That's it. Okay. So it's because you were standing on top of the thing. Right. Got it. So you launched at a higher angle. Yeah. Oh, they're like, no, not that way. This way. That was pointless, but okay. Yeah. There's really, there's no point. So uh, we're cutting ahead here. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Matt. We got more spheres. Dude, fuck this game. <laughs> I demand a re who made this game? Uh, I have forgotten. Let me Toxic order. dreams. Toxic dreams? Games. Yeah. Well. So it's toxic because like of the spheres. Not a good name. Did so, you beat this game in your playthrough, Cody? Uh, I did not. Uh, I did uh, get to uh, a level that is much harder um where you can only activate you can only visually see something like you can only visually see the blue blocks at once or the red blocks or the yellow blocks so you have mm -hmm. to kind of switch between them uh, and everything's very dark but uh we won't see that level here because i did not play a whole lot of it <clears throat> but i do i i at least according to that little cube that is in the transition between levels, I, I did get probably about uh, halfway through the game. Mm -hmm. And that's where we'll stop because uh, the rest of those are pretty much the same. But uh, yeah, I still find that game a lot of fun. For uh, sure. Uh, it's It's got some very interesting puzzles to it. Uh, I do like the aesthetic. I wish it had a bit more personality with uh, characters and stuff, but beyond yeah. that, uh, it was really good. Uh, two, two thumbs up. Um, but yeah, that that's... That's really it. Uh, we are pretty much at the end of our episode for this week. Uh, but before we sign out, Matt, what are we doing next time? I don't even have to generate one. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because next time... Our tradition. Viewer, beware. You're in for a scare. <laughs> Blood coming from the top. Blood and then, <laughs> and then snakes. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Next time on Cartridge Blowers, it's... Halloween special. Yeah, we'll I think play spooky games. Absolutely, something vaguely Halloween oriented could yes. be actually Halloween. Could be spooky. Could just have skeletons in it. We'll see. But uh, we've we've done this every year since we started cartridge blowers. So. Could just have skeletons. In sure, it? why not? Just have a skeleton somewhere in the game. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't everyone? Uh, sure. Yeah, All underneath the skin. Them? Yeah. Uh, let's, let's try to be a little I bit just, better I played with it. Fire the Dragon. Just, <laughs> probably got a skeleton in my bed. <laughs> Fair enough. Until then, this has been this week's Cartridge Blowers. I'm Cody Coleman. With me, as always, and Nikki Wright. Hi. And Matt Krua. Hey, bye. Until next time, don't die. But Matt, they should do something. What is it? Keep on blowing. Absolutely. Good night, everybody. <laughs>